We're John and Ashley. In this episode, we go from a ready-made travel trailer to standing the walls for our tiny house. But first, we want to get you up to speed on how we came to be building a tiny house in the first place. We just completed a two-year trip on our sailboat, Baby Blue, down the east coast of the U.S. and through the Eastern Caribbean. Baby Blue has been our only home since we completely remodeled and then sold our place in Denver to fund our sailing adventure, so we've gotten used to living in a small space. Ready to spend some time off the boat, especially after getting struck by lightning. So we're building a new, slightly bigger traveling home. Our 175 square foot towable tiny house will allow us to continue to wander, on land this time, as we work toward achieving our goals while living debt free. We're excited to hit the road once our tiny house is complete, but first we need to build the thing. Though John is very handy, and Ashley is crafty, we've never built an entire house, tiny or otherwise. We're not experts and we know we're going to make a lot of mistakes and have more than a few do-overs. We're also big on doing things our own way, which often turns out to be the hard way, and not so great at committing when it comes to the small details. So naturally, we're kind of making up the design as we go along. But don't worry, in the end, everything always works out just fine. Right? We're building our tiny house at John's parents in New York. Well, no, not that New York. This New York. Or instead of these cars, you're much more likely to see John's family has a nice size acreage with plenty of space for us to build our tiny house outside without disturbing the neighbors. Too much. We're enjoying taking up a lot of space while we still can, and being reunited with our dog Penny, who got to live here while we were on the water. Alright, let's start building this tiny house. This is our new tumbleweed trailer I just picked up yesterday in Pennsylvania. We decided to go with a brand new tumbleweed trailer. Um, we wanted to have a nice foundation to start building the house on if we're going to spend the money to build the house. We didn't want to do it on an old rusted out trailer that wasn't going to last very long. And with buying a used trailer, you have to watch out for things like um, you know, the tires can be really expensive if those are worn out or if your brakes don't work. Um, lots of times the wiring will give you issues on an older trailer. Uh, we also plan on covering some miles with it, so we wanted to make sure it was in good shape and we didn't have to worry about uh, whether it was going to be safe to tow down the road or anything like that. And it really wasn't much more money to buy the uh, tumbleweed trailer that's custom built to put the house on than it would be to just buy a new standard um, like car towing trailer or flatbed trailer. So the trailer comes with the leveling jacks already attached, um, the threaded rods to secure down the tiny house. And it also has a pan already in the bottom of it, so it's ready to just put in the insulation. Um, and then start building on top of it. Just finished putting the cutting and putting the foam on or in the trailer bed. Um, it's still sticking up a bit in spots, but it'll get held down by the deck, I guess, once we screw that down. So I need to spray foam to seal some of these cracks and then. Yeah, we can start putting the deck on. Before inserting the polystyrene insulation, we added fascia boards to the trailer frame. This creates the proper spacing so the threaded rods will be centered in the wall. After screwing the whole thing down, we realized we'd screwed the whole thing up because we'd forgotten the foam sill seal strips that need to cover the metal crossbars on the trailer. So make that do over number one. That little non-insulated square on the right is going to be our front porch. I've already tried it out and I think there's going to be plenty of space. This morning we're working on framing the trailer. We finally decided that we want our walls to be about 7 feet high. It should give us enough room underneath the loft and then above. You push the thumb button, that's like the safety, and then pull in the other thing. It starts, just start it. There you go. Now you pull it down. Now 
one you can just go really fast with, you don't have to be slow. It took two days to put together the side wall framing. We are roughly basing our design on the tumbleweed cypress, but not using the plans, so it took a while to figure out the first side. Once everything was sorted out, we just made a copy of it for the second side, which went much faster. This time we remembered to put the sill seal down before standing the walls. The end wall went up without a problem, but we needed to recruit some extra help for the longer and much heavier side walls. That's the handy thing about building at your parents' house. That and the free food. Oh, you just gotta miraculously jump up there, Dad. It takes a lot of finesse to build a house. So we're about five days into our tiny house build and we've got all of the walls up. Um, so the uh, decking went on really fast, but we've been kind of winging it as far as our design. So. We've got to go back through the framing and put in the windows because we finally decided where we want those and we've got a pretty solid idea now of our layout for the interior. At least enough to get the windows in and finish up the framing. So that's what we're going to work on today. To cut the plywood for the outside around the wheel wheel. I don't know how other people have done it but John just laid a piece of foam against this and then we taped it up cut around it for a little pattern so you can stick that on the plywood and cut around it and uh, we'll see if it works out. So... How'd you do? Got the, the hole is about the right shape, but I didn't exactly get it in the right spot. <laughs> a little bit off there. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to just redo it, but then we're wasting a big piece of plywood. Or possibly cutting it and then placing in a small piece of plywood there. I did a much better job on the second side. Once we had the sections cut out for around the wheel wells, the rest of the plywood went up really easily. In the next episode, we'll install our metal roof and start getting ready for electrical. If you're wondering what that noise is in the background of our videos, it's just this. I'm John. Say it like you don't hate to be John. <laughs>